Welcome to the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast. My name is Rob Murgatroyd, and I am a former doctor turned lifestyle entrepreneur. Each week, I interview some of the best minds on the planet on the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Today's episode is a mini-sode that we call Fried Dates with the Wife. In these mini-sodes, my wife Kim and I deconstruct the strategies that we've developed over the last decade to not only grow personally, but to turn our struggles into lessons and create fulfillment in all areas of our lives. Excuses are over. It's time to live. Let's dig into today's topic. All right, before we jump into this episode, I want to invite you to be considered for my Work Hard, Play Hard Mastermind by completing an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. So this mastermind is not like any mastermind you may have been to or heard of, I promise you. This mastermind is for six to seven figure entrepreneurs that are working too damn much and aren't taking the time to have amazing experiences around the world with an incredible tribe of people. So every 100 days or so, I drop you into new experiences that are specifically designed to elevate your thinking, to give you new ideas. Look, you get your best ideas not staring at a computer. And actually, this is the way high-level people really collaborate with each other. They do it over a glass of champagne, watching the sunset in the south of France. So if you are ready to do some fun stuff around the world and really, really want to level up your tribe in one shot, fill out an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. We'll jump on a call and we'll see if it's a good fit. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Well, Kimberly, you're married to a lunatic, <laughs> Murgatroyd. How are you on this COVID Sunday morning? Oh, well, so we're recording this episode because on Sunday because my husband at two in the morning was walking around the house, like upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs. And I didn't know what was going down. So we began this conversation about why he was awake at 2 a.m. and pacing. And uh, we just, we had to stop and turn the mics on because I think we need to capture this. It could help some people. All right. So you'll hear, uh, you'll hear a little Sophia in the background. Apologies in advance. Okay. Here's the best way I can explain this. And I'm still sorting this out. And, you know, I, I don't know how much sense this is going to make for people listening because I, I think part of the listeners will say this is, um, weird, nutty behavior. And I think he needs a professional. And then the other part will go, oh no, I get it. So here it is around 2 a.m. last night, I, uh, I woke up, you know, just like woke up, like as if you'd have to go pee or whatever. And I immediately felt a sense of claustrophobia, which I do have a history of. So if I'm on, if I'm on a plane, for example, it doesn't bother me, but if we land and I'm waiting for them to open the thing, and I feel like it's taken too long, then the claustrophobia will kick in. So I definitely have a history of claustrophobia. But I certainly never have it when I'm not in an environment that, you know, is claustrophobic, like being in my home. And around 2 a.m. last night, I just woke up, and um, I sleep with, uh, as every diva should, I sleep <laughs> with uh, earplugs and an eye mask, and immediately- Not just any eye mask, <clears throat> like a silk eye mask. It needs to be- you know, It's you for see, your lashes, right? Well, if you look at all the people who are wearing masks right now, they'll show you their face. Their, their face is a mess from the mask that they're wearing. Masks will really do damage. Oh my God, I'm just saying, Robert. I'm just saying, it's in the news. It's a thing. So I immediately had to rip off the mask and the earplugs out of my ears and started feeling anxious, I guess. And- I looked up at the ceiling and the ceiling felt like it was starting to come down on t top of me. It was really weird. And I just sat there and said, okay, well, this is, this is weird. And it was one of those moments where like I had to go, am I dreaming or is this really happening? And then after a few minutes, I knew that this was really happening. And I'm like, why am I feeling claustrophobic? And not a good question to ask when you're claustrophobic because your brain will give you all the answers of why you're claustrophobic right now because the ceiling is too close, because the walls are too close. It was getting really weird. So it's like, okay, I got to get out of bed, which I've never done in the history of my life. Got out of bed and um, walked upstairs. And I walked upstairs and I looked out the front 
uh, window uh, where the front of the house is, we have a balcony, and that balcony looks onto um, a few other houses. And I felt those houses significantly closer to where they normally are. In other words, that the street- They were coming at you. Yeah, the street that's between us did not feel wide enough. So everything was coming in around you, on top of you, and and making you panic, right? So this is like legit a pan- your first- panic attack. Well, it felt like it felt like I was moving at that point it felt like I was moving into what people what I've heard people discuss as a a panic attack. So I was like, okay. Well, I can't go to the front of the house. <clears throat> this feels weird. Let me go to the back of the house. In the back of the house, we also have a balcony that looks onto the backyard. And the uh, the glass, the French door. We sound thing. like we live in a castle. Like, I know. It's, it's like it's, a turret. It's, by the way, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's seven steps from one balcony to the other. Um, the glass, uh, what do they call these things? French doors? Sliding doors. Sliding doors. Uh, we're all, uh, yeah, French doors. You just elevated French doors us. open this way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, they were all fogged up. And it, the, the window was all fogged up, which made it, worse because I couldn't see outside. So then I immediately went back to the front of the house and then those houses across the street were starting to cave in on me again. And I was like, oh shit, I have to do something to get myself out of this. What is going on with me? And now I'm awake, my heart's pounding. I am sweating like crazy. And so I go into my office and I look, our office, and I look for some books and I start, you know, saying, okay, I'm going to read, I'm going to read something. And I couldn't even get past reading the title because I was, you know, how you locked into something. I was, I was, I was like free falling in this thing and I couldn't do anything else. And so that went on 15 minutes where I went back and forth from the front of the house to the back of the house. And, you know, now it's, I guess, 2.45 or whatever time it was. And I went downstairs into the bedroom and I was like, I, I just have to force myself to go to sleep. So I went down into the bed. I put my eye mask on, my earplugs in. And I, immediately my heart rate, like, you know, felt like it doubled. And I pulled them right back out and the ceiling started coming in and I went back upstairs. And I went, I, I, I played that trick of going in the bed, going, this is stupid. You're fine. Go to sleep. And after five minutes of really feeling like I was about to go to sleep, like that moment right before I went to sleep, my heart started pounding like crazy and I felt claustrophobic. And so I would walk back upstairs and then I was like, okay, I, I am I am going to walk outside because I need to get out of this. And then I was like, I'm not going to be this guy. First of all, I was naked, um, <laughs> which would have been really weird. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to go- would have been here shortly. I'm not going to go walking down the streets, you know, naked. Uh, naked. That's just weird. I'm glad you had that moment of, <laughs> of real. Clarity. <laughs> and, and then you went back to bed and you said, I'm just going to ride it out. You leaned into it, closed it, your eyes. It, I, I and felt, eventually exhausted yourself and fell asleep. Yeah, it felt like I was Dracula. I put myself into a coffin. I closed the coffin and I said, I'm going to sit here <laughs> oh in the God. dark. And this is really what it felt like, like no bullshit. Like I felt like I was inside of a coffin. My heart's beaten. I'm sweating and I just have to force myself. It felt like more like a maybe a locked trunk is what yeah. it felt like. Um, I have to force myself. And then I did obviously go to sleep. And when I woke up this morning, like, you know, like one eye opened, I was like, are we, I'm just going to be part two. Am I going <laughs> to literally spend my day feeling this today? And it was all gone. Okay. So we, we need to kind of get but to I, the bottom I, of I this. Can, so, right? But I can talk myself back into it. Okay. So we, he told me the story this morning and we began talking about where is this coming from? And obviously we're in the middle of this pandemic and we have um, a lot of change in our life and all of those things. And so I, I said to Rob, I said, you know, you're not the most adaptable person. And he is, we call him a certainty junkie. Certainty is very high for him. So when things in life are uncertain, he is a shit show. So I told him, I said, you know, you're a certainty guy. And when I said that, you were like, yes. You know, he moved to California. He had the beach. He had the sun. He had the 70 degrees, no humidity. He was certain of what he had here. And now, slowly, these things were taken. He's a routine guy. We would wake up in the morning, walk Sophia to school, and then he'd do his day and he'd go down to the beach. And he had his he had his routine and his certainty in his routine. And now 
that's been ripped away. So it's. Let it, me. I want to add a little bit of color on sure. there too. So, for those of you that are interested in a planner, there's a planner called Evo, E V O, and it works with your personality and brain type. You have to take a test to get it. It's a really good planner. So inside of this planner, there's a, there's a place to put order and balance in your day. It's very important for me to have order and, and balance. And when this whole COVID thing started, you know, as, as most of us went through this, it was like, there was, there were things that were shut down, you know, sort of slowly, like, you know, when your mom was here, we went out for pizza, right. And we were still able to do that. Nobody was there at the restaurant, but we were still able to do that. So it didn't feel like much of an interruption. And then they closed that down and we couldn't do that. We went, okay, well, you know, we could still go out and order some takeout. And so it was like, it was a small shift where we can still get a feeling of going out because we had Mexican, but you know, it wasn't really going out. But the big thing for me was being able to work out. So, you know, that time in the day of like, you know, walking on the treadmill and lifting weights, you know, was the release that I needed um, during the day. And it got to the point where I was pretty much me and the other, you know, the guy that worked there, the guy that worked (laughs) there were the only ones in the gym, um, but I was still doing it. And then they closed the gym. And then I started feeling like, oh God, this is, this really sucks. Okay. Well, I got a giant beach here. Let me go down to the beach because that, that time is really important to me. And so I planned my day around going down to the beach and it wound up just being, you know, mag- and working out on the beach. And yeah. All that. It was magnificent. I was able to do like sand workouts, um, you know, uh, practice some surfing things. And it just, it was, it was great. I was walked down, you know, walked down the beach and I was like, you know what? I can get through this, you know, and keep my sanity without going crazy because I can make this great. And then they announced uh, yesterday they're closing the beach and they're closing the beach, not for a day. They're closing it for a little bit over a month. And each one of these things has gone into my structured type brain and felt like it was taking something from me because it is. And me trying to figure out how to replace those things with things like I don't want to come across as a diva because I am number one. And number two, there are a lot of people that are much, much worse off than I am. So please, you know, don't like there are people right now in a a studio apartment. There's five of them in, in Italy that haven't been out in two months or whatever it is. And so I'm not in no way am I making you know, saying that mine is worse than theirs. I'm just telling you that this is what I'm dealing the, with. The, but this isn't, okay. So let me, I am the first one to call you a diva mm-hmm. and to say, get over it. But what I know about you and your brain type is you are a certainty junkie and you don't adapt very well to change. And so when your morning routine is getting interrupted because, you know, little munchkin there is getting up And in running in on it, she's getting up earlier because she's going to bed earlier because by (laughs) we're like putting her down at like 630 because we're like, we need a break. We've had exposure for 15 hours. Yeah. And so (laughs) now she's getting up earlier and, and everything is shifting. There's no walk to school. There's no me and you time going to get coffee and walking down the beach. There's all of these things shift. And when you have somebody that is so structured and routine in order to keep balance in your life and balance is the most important thing in your life. Hence your brand, work hard, play hard. Everything is out of alignment for you. So it's not that it's the beach. It's that it's your routine now has 100% been blown up and you need to to shift. So here's, here's what I said this morning. I said, it's almost like, he said, I just don't know why this is happening. Like why did this happen? I said, well, you're a certainty guy. You have zero certainty in your life right now. And your routine just got blown up and you're walking around like the the crazy lady muttering, did you see they closed the beach? Did you see they closed the beach? They closed the beach. What am I going to do? They closed the beach. And he said, it's almost like I feel claustrophobic, like I can't go anywhere. I have nowhere to go. And I, I can leave my house, but I have nowhere to go. And I said, well, let's not make this worse than it is. Like Tony Robbins 101, don't make it better than it is. Don't make it worse than it is. And by saying, I have nowhere to go, that's not true. You could get in the car. You could drive to Santa Barbara. You can't really get out of the car and do anything much, but you could 
Go for a drive. No to a teacher. Don't tell the claustrophobic he can't get out of the car. That's true. So, you know, but you can act, you can go for a walk. You can work out outside in other places, six feet apart from everybody else. Like you, you can actually leave, right? So I said, you know, Rob, okay, let's, let's think this through. When you, we went to Europe for four months, that was very uncertain for him. That was a very difficult thing to take this certainty junkie and give him eight different cities, Airbnbs he's never seen, countries he's never heard of, and toss his ass in there and say, hey, good luck. Like, And I was so proud of you because you rolled with it. And the reason why I think you were able to adapt is because you were certain it was going to be uncertain. Mm -hmm. You prepared yourself for months to be able to adapt to whatever came your way, right? And and in this instance, you had zero preparation time. So here's what I'm going to ask you and what I would ask the people at home if they're feeling similar is what would this look like if it were easy? If you now had to rework your schedule, what would it look like if it were easy? How could you lean into this and create some certainty where it doesn't exist? You know, look... um, you're using my shit on me, so I appreciate that. I am You're welcome. I am having a really like I'm gonna be a horrible coaching student for you right now because you don't want to answer that. I don't want to answer that. And the fact that I don't want to answer that is telling me I want to hold on to this. You want to hold on to your beach was taken from you. Uh, yeah. Well, you you want to hold on to that your your structure and your life and all of these things that it feels like everything has been stripped away that you worked for 15 years for, right? Uh, yeah, I, so you mean to get to California? Yeah, to get I, to California. I suppose that there is a piece of me right now that doesn't want to find what could make this easy because I uh, kind of have, I'm just having trouble communicating what I'm feeling right now. Like I, I just want it to be over. And I think because I want it to be different, and I want to to not have to like look. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you an answer here that is not an answer to the question that you're asking. And and I know that I hate when people do that to me, but it'll give you a little bit more context. I feel that I've worked so hard on crafting a structure that allows me to feel a hundred percent, and now I feel forty percent, and I'm trying to. I'm, 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 I'm going, yeah, but this thing works here. But then the other side of me is going, yeah, but this thing's gone. This thing, this thing isn't here okay, anymore I'm, for you okay. to work into. I'm going to take you back. Yeah. What would it look like if it were easy? Yeah, I knew you were going to do that. If, we're, if it were easy, I would... How can you <sighs> lean into this? The way, okay, here's how I would do it. I would, I would look at what is, and I would try and craft a new schedule that could give me the most the most feeling of freedom, joy, happiness, fulfillment, balance, whatever words you want to use within the confines, a oh, horrible word of uh, <laughs> of what we are experiencing now. The other part of this, and I, again, I know I'm not giving you the answer, and I hate when people do this to me, but it is stuff that's in there that, that needs to come out. The other part of it is it feels so protracted. It just feels like, you know, when, when I think about like, this isn't like, to you know, today is Sunday. When I think about like, it's not make it till Thursday. It, it's, it's like most of these you know, municipalities are, are like scheduling it for a month from now. Yeah. So it's not even like, it's some, like I, I have to, okay, so I'm talking out loud here, but I have to slide into a new structure. I have no choice. We have no choice. Yes, you do. Well, no, 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 no. See that it, words are important. You do have choice. You need to take your ownership back of your schedule. You are not under some duress of somebody else holding your schedule hostage. You do have a choice. You have a choice of how you schedule your day. You have a choice of how you how you lean into this. There are places that you can walk and be completely safe and get exercise that have stunning views of the ocean that might even be better than what you were experiencing before. You do have a choice and you need to take ownership back of your life and of your schedule. Otherwise, you are going to feel claustrophobic and like somebody is taking things from you. Mm, mm-hmm. 
So words are important. You mm-hmm. do have a choice. That's good. No, what choice good. do you want to make? Um, what would it look like if it were easy? First of all, I need I need a structure. So if it were easy, I would create a structure. Great. Number one, we're going to create a structure. Yeah. Next, um, where you know where I think you should work out. Mm. There's the there's a hill on like I don't know what street it is, but the one where the little restaurants are that you can see the beach and the ocean. There's a hill there. You could do like hill sprints. You could do different things right there where you have this beautiful view, view You're of the about beach. Manhattan, Manhattan Beach. No, I'm talking about like near that house we really like, like down that area or go to Bruce's Beach with that hilly park area. Mm-hmm. You can, you, we will find a place for you that feels really good for you to be able to, I get it. I want to see the ocean. I like to watch the waves crash. I like to do that. It, it keeps me sane. There are places we can find that for you. If you have to drive to, you know, Palos Verdes and look at the cliffs, whatever it is, we will find it for you. Maybe what I can do is add something new that I like. Maybe yeah. I can add like a bicycle. Perfect. I can throw a bicycle into the mix because I've never like in go the bike af- riding. Yeah, like in the afternoon, I've never <laughs> done that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe I will become a, a bicycler. A, yeah, is that on, what they call it? On cyclist your, on your on your huffy <laughs> on my huffy on your with, huffy with my banana so, seat. So if you can, is, I think the biggest thing here is you not feeling like you're in control of your schedule, which you are, and things are being taken from you. But you, then guess what? I'm looking at this and saying, okay, so can't do those things. Let's try new things. Well, you said it right. You said it right earlier. And you, there are two things. There are multiple things you said today that are that I have to process and and gain more clarity on. So they are, they are helpful. And I'm not going to be able to articulate them well right now, but I will, but I will say that there are two things. One is when you described my ability to adapt into, you know, the, the, when we were traveling to Europe, there were a lot of concerns I had. One was like, I don't know where I'm, where are we cleaning our clothes? Where am I getting my, my hair cut every three weeks? And, can you imagine that? You know, and Montenegro. Can you, I'm in Montenegro. Where the hell am I getting my hair cut every three weeks? And we're there for four months, right? So there was all of those things, but, but you're right. I framed it differently. This is great. The framing that I did for month, the framing that I did for, uh, for traveling to Europe was, this is going to be unpredictable. Every single day, lean into unpredictability and do the best you can to have a good time. And by the way, you did a phenomenal job when because you showed I had up. A, in I Monty. had a stru- I had a structure. Yeah, the structure was there is no structure. Great, right? So we're going to so do that ne- again, right? So here's the difference. The difference is I had never been to Montenegro, I didn't have a structure and then the structure was taken and I had to build a new one. So the environment I'm in now, I have a structure, but it's quote unquote, And you're going to get here. to go back to that, but maybe you'll actually go back to it with some new things that you really enjoy Yeah, and maybe some things will shift. So I don't know. No, this is helpful. This yeah. is actually, this is actually very helpful. So, 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 what would, would, so let's back it up. So what one, would it look like if this was easy? If it was easy, I would create a structure that excites me. Good. What would it look like if it were elegant? If it were elegant, I would take a shower, I'd put my makeup on. Good. And I would a wear, chunky heel. I'd wear a chunky heel and I would get out there, tits up to the world, <laughs> and I would be grateful I you're would, alive. I would be grateful that I'm alive and I would be an example for possibility. Perfect. What would it look like if it were fun? If it were fun, I would I would experiment with different things to see which thing is the most fun for me. Like try bicycling. Okay, if that's not fun, let's try uh, walking. Well, bicycling is fun when you're going downhill, but the hills here when you're going uphill, less fun. Uh, yeah. I mean, I could take my stimulus check and buy an electric bike. I see, there um, you go. Um, How could this be fun? How could you make this fun? And I know that like your nerves are shot by the end of the day. How could you make that fun? How could you make it with the, with the SOFIA fun? Go all in on chunks and then have recovery chunks. Everybody needs recovery. Yeah. So it would be like, you know, on the floor playing for an hour, riding riding the bike around the neighborhood for an hour and then going, okay, um, I need 
I need my hour now. Yeah. And so I, I, I hit the reset and she hits the reset. Yep. That, that's, that's, that's a possibility. Okay. That worked. I did that the other day. That worked. Okay. So you are going to design a schedule that excites you. Mm-hmm. You're going to try new things and you're going to lean in on the things that make you shake and give you anxiety. Yeah. How does that feel? I don't know. I haven't done it yet. But right now, in theory, it feels good. All right. I think we're done here. Have a good day. Well, that's it, everybody. <laughs> I hope you had a nice, long therapy session. For those of you that made it to the By end. By the way, this is like, uh, what? It, what is it like in Rob's brain? It's like a three-ring circus for, for real. So let me know if any of this resonated with you. If this if this came across as being too self-indulgent, my apologies, but sometimes. I don't think so. Okay. I just don't, I just don't want to. First it. of all, it was my idea to take this because I think a lot of people are trying to figure out what the F happened to their life and how can they rebuild it and do it with grace yeah. and give yourself grace, give yourself love and lean into it and ask yourself those three questions. What would this look like if it were easy? What would it look like if it were elegant? And what would it look like if it were fun? Yeah, I'm sure that um, everybody listening has are is having their own version of claustrophobia in one way, shape, or another. But that's it. I'd love to have your feedback. So uh, shoot us a message. Let you know. Let us know what you thought of this episode. And hang in there, everybody. This can't last forever. Bye bye. All right. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode and you know someone that needs some help in either stepping up their work hard game or their play hard game, it would mean the world to me if you shared this podcast with them to help me get this movement out there. So if you like what you heard, head on over to iTunes, take 30 seconds and leave me a five star review and I will be forever grateful. So until the next episode, excuses are over. It's time to live.